Hi hey everyone, in this video we're gonna dive into Houdini and we're gonna create a curve meshes for the uh, for that spell uh, on that character. Uh, also, in the end of the video there will be just a sphere uh, mesh that we're gonna create with various UV layouts, but it's gonna take just a minute because it's just a very simple sphere mesh. Right, let me press play, let me show you. So as you can see, I've got this cast uh, for that character and its spell and I've got various meshes uh, for those uh, swirl or curved uh, meshes. Okay, so let's maybe build a system in Houdini uh, for those and let me show you how they look in the engine. So that's the uh, curve mesh with a cross section in case you need it. I also got a single mesh so that's without the cross section Obviously, it depends on what kind of perspective you're working on. For example, top down, I don't think you might need a curve uh, that is a cross section. However, anything that is a third person, first person might need a cross section. And also, I'm using those tubes as well. And I think they'll look, uh, those look really nice with the mask material. Um, they kind of catch light and give this a very nice reflections and uh, shine on them as well okay so I've got this and also I've got very thin tube as well as I was testing how it might look and here I've just got the sphere with the various UV layouts all right so let's dive into Houdini and let's start making our setup for those uh, swirls Okay, so those setups I've already done, so let's start from scratch. I'm gonna grab geometry node, I'm gonna call it uh, swirls underscore YouTube, and in here I'm gonna get spiral. As you can see here, I've got two spir spirals, one is the uh, default one and one is from the lab tools. I haven't updated my lab tools for a while because some of the nodes have been broken in the recent versions. So I decided to stick with the a bit older labs version, so let's grab maybe default Houdini spiral and let's tweak a couple settings okay so for the height I'm just gonna apply maybe 0.6 for the turns I just need one turn I'm gonna zero the start radius because I actually want my spiral to start from the uh, from this pivot point from very center so when I place it on the character in the game engine I know this is going to be the uh, destination for my swirl okay so the whole motion and the whole trail will go towards that center increase per turn I'm think I'm gonna start with one maybe two so it's nice and long as you can see here and uh, division is gonna keep it as it is I'm just gonna go to the height ramp and I'm gonna try to get a decent uh, wavy pattern on it okay so here i'm gonna get a, a minus one at 0.5 scale and then i'm just gonna drag those two like this then i'm gonna select a monotone cubic interpolation on all of those and that should create very nice curve on our swirl as you can see, it flows very nicely, I think. I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to touch anything else. I think 50 subdivisions, it's, it might be probably even too much, but let's continue. I'm gonna get a sweep node, change it to ribbon. For the width, I'm gonna go with two, might be a little bit excessive. However, I know I will be tweaking the scale of it. So in here, I'm just gonna scale it down and for the columns, I'm gonna try to, because I just need this little bit, yeah, sorry, middle bit here, so I can actually apply some vertex color on it. I'm gonna scroll down, actually go back to spiral, because I need to enable the distance attribute, which is located here. 
and with that sweep node I think you can play with the roll it depends on your camera angle in the game so for example if you're working on something that is uh, top down you might be better off with something like this however for something like a maybe third person we're gonna do a cross section okay so in here let me enable other stuff like uh, UVs so if we go to the UV viewport the UV is gonna fit into zero to one space and next I'm just gonna copy that sweep node here go back to surface and play with the roll of it next I'm just gonna combine those two using the merge node and that's our cross section okay and next I'm gonna apply some vertex color to it so that will be gradient labs I'm gonna change instead of bounding box I'm gonna remap the attribute and I'm gonna pick our distance attribute I'm gonna compute a range as well put the white bit somewhere in the middle probably 0.5 and at the end I'm gonna have another black color so now you can see because we got the distance that we computed the range we got very nice vertex color on this and next I'm gonna get group because I would like the vertex color to be applied on the edges as well so I'm gonna change the group to edges I call this one edges as well disable the base group go to edges and unsharp edges and as you can see now I selected all of those on my swirl next I'm just gonna get a color node gonna pick black color but I'm going to apply only to the group that it's called edges that we've just created okay so as you can see this is gonna give us really cool effect we don't need any alpha on it we're just gonna use the vertex color with that mesh and I think that's it for that swirl so next I'm just gonna apply a transform I'm gonna call this one an uh, engine rather game engine scale I'm gonna apply 50 here and I'm gonna get a null at the end and that's going to be my export okay so that's one of those and the next bit is you might want to experiment with a cross section however many times you don't need cross section you just need one of those so you want to grab one of the sweeps and drag it uh, over the merge okay what I've tried I've tried to just disable it and export it like this but it was giving me UV errors in the engine so if you struggle with the UVs in the engine you might want to do that instead okay obviously you can come back here tweak the roll settings for it as well in case you want a slightly better orientation cool next bit is let's grab swirls I'm gonna copy this whole section paste it and I'm gonna call this one swirls tube gonna disable that one dive inside here I'm gonna delete those two because I don't need them I just need one sweep and for that sweep I'm gonna head to the top and pick round tube I'm gonna increase the column amount maybe to 8 or 12 it depends on how much do you actually need I'm gonna go to attribute color as well and recompute the distance just in case because sometimes it cause uh, um, issues and I'm just gonna export this one as it is with that scale and also maybe with a higher scale something like 0 0.5 0 0.5 might need a bit more columns so feel free to experiment with those but I think that's really it and um, so in the Unreal Engine on the effect you saw in the beginning I think I've got a cross section I've got a single swirl and I've got two of those because I was trying to test the different thickness on that tube so 0.1 was the default one and I think I've got the 0.5 as well just to see how it might look as a bit thicker tube and then I'm just gonna export this one. all right and final bit 
let's create a sphere. This is going to be very simple. Just gonna dive inside. I already got sphere here. I'm gonna zoom in with space F. I'm gonna pick polygon for the frequency. I'm gonna go slightly higher, maybe six, because I need this uh, for my um, word position offset. And next, I'm just gonna get a UV project here. And this one's going to be polar coordinates. I'm gonna initialize and uh, let's preview it, how it looks in the viewport. I think that's good enough. However, if you wanna play with uh, some of the settings, you can go maybe to uh, your translate. As you can see here, get pick a lower value and try to scroll it slightly, see if you can find slightly better uh, projection. But I think the default ones of the best plane uh, should do the trick. So that would be if you actually want some texture on it. I think it's going to look cool. However, for the world position offset, I'm going to create another UV project. And I just need a flat projection like this. I'm going to apply here UV attribute as a UV2. So that'll be my second UV channel. And I'm going to use this one for my world position offset in the game engine. Next, I'm just going to get transform. Oops, not trace. Let's try again. That's going to be my game engine scale. And I'm going to apply 50 here. And the last bit, it's a null as export. Okay, so I'm going to end up with five different meshes. One is sphere and two other ones. Uh, sorry, four other ones are two um, flat plane ribbon and swirls, one is cross section, one is just a single plane, and two other ones are uh, tubes. One is a thick one, and one is, I think, with a 0.1 a width. Okay, so feel free to experiment with those meshes. They gave me good results, I think. I really like the tubes because I know I can apply some mask material there with, um, with some roughness and maybe some reflections uh, from coming from the light uh, lighting. And if I combine it with my cross section or the single plane, which ha which will have a uh, soft translucent material on it, it looks really cool in the game engine. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this one.